that favor the people favor benefit the people just as Allah has favored you now this Allah's favor count how many favors of Allah are there so many unlimited we cannot count Allah Ta'ala the amount of favors and blessings and mercies Allah has surrounded us with and shrouded us in the man, mankind of people of Iman Allah has sent Allah says Alal Mu'minina Laqad manna lahu alal mu'minina idh ba'tha fihim rasoolam min This is a unique thing that Allah Ta'ala He only had one such thing One Remember this This favor How can you return a favor? That Allah says now you favor the people You favor the people Just as Allah has favored you In other words In other words The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's coming Due to his coming that Allah's massive and greatest favor upon us and we can only be grateful for this favor in one way. And what is that method? What is that way? That the, the objective of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu coming to this world for which Allah Ta'ala sent his Habib Sallallahu Alaihi to the world. Allah says, so you now, Allah says, so you now, you favor the people around you. And the blessed habits of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi says what you need to do, and the and the most important quality, greatest quality was the akhlaq, the characteristics, the manners of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Rasulullah was the most patient. He was the most tender-hearted and soft-hearted. And if somebody did wrong to him, he would overlook that wrong that was done. Whichever individual would do something uh, against the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Rasulullah would do nice to that person. And this is how he would return uh, the, the behavior. If somebody didn't give, Rasulullah would give to him. If somebody oppressed the Prophet Wasallam, the Prophet would ignore that oppression. If uh, the Holy Prophet Wasallam's blessed habit was such that he would never take revenge on anybody. He would never seek revenge. Never for any purpose. The Prophet Wasallam never hit anybody with his hand. Has Aisha Sadiqa radiallahu anha stated that Nabi Al-Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his blessed hand had never beaten anybody. And never did he beat a khadim, a servant. Never did he raise his hand on a wife. Never did he hit uh, a worker of his. And she said, I never saw that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa for his own personal gain that he did dhulam or oppress somebody. Hmm. Of course, that if for example somebody is disrespecting Allah, then Allah's Nabi Sallallahu would become angry. Yes, and this was the sunnah of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, brothers. That when somebody is angry, he should be angry at that time where it is something in opposition to the Sharia. Sharia is being broken, disrespected, dishonored. You could see that this is a wrong situation. This is incorrect at that time. This is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Otherwise, in normal circumstances, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu blessed habit was not like this. A true human being is he who follows the Prophet And it's not just for the mu'min, that a mu'min is a tender-hearted, soft-hearted. It's for all human beings, though. it doesn't matter, any religion, religious background, any sect, any culture. But the mu'min has mercy for every person in the world. Every human being has fikr and concern. So to attain these feelings, emotions, we have to work hard. We need to work hard. Yes, and the, the term of this hard work is tazkiyah. The method of this hard work is tazkiyah, purification. We do purification nowadays so we can become pious people, walis of Allah, so we can experience kash visions and see miracles. That's why we enter into the salasil, and that's why we follow the line of suluk and tazkiyah. This is not the objective. The objective of tazkiyah, purification, is that Allah Ta'ala's favor upon us, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu we should uh, repay that favor of Allah. So, but how? By improving our akhlaq so that when we are presented in the court of Allah, then alhamdulillah, with those akhlaqs of the Holy Prophet and with the akhlaq hamida we should present ourselves to Allah. The akhlaq hamida that the Holy Prophet came to teach us.
Solomon's tezkiyah does dhikr. Remember, Zalan goes to a sheikh for reformation, improvement when he works hard. On this point, that Allah, my dirty, impure, impure characteristics within me, I want to eliminate them. Love of the world, love of material things, love of wealth, love of money, consume this person's wealth, usurp this person's property, take his wealth, and to suppress the rights, to cancel people's rights, not to implement the rights due on people. This is wrong. All of these things are wrong. These are dirty, impure characteristics and habits that are embedded within people. And to work hard to eliminate these, to remove these dirts and uh, dirty things and impurities and to replace them with excellence and goodness. That's why we do dhikr adhkar, so we can rid ourselves of the impurities within us, so we can realize the true, uh, the, 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 the real state of affairs. And Allah has given a great reward for this. That as soon as a person... As soon as a person um, removes a khlaqi, razila, impure things, whether it's a woman or a man, remember this. That's when we say, oh, I'm doing tazkiyah, tazkiyah, a person becomes a wali Allah. So we've heard this regularly. Remember that a person is doing tazkiyah, if a person does tazkiyah, tazkiyah, purification, clean, and do dhikr and dhikr, eventually one day Allah Ta'ala makes that individual his wali, his friend, and illuminates the person within, and his heart becomes illuminated and enlightened. We hear this, don't we? We hear this. Uh, that a person does dhikr Allah to illuminate his heart. For which reason? So when a human being does dhikr Allah, then the dirty, impure characteristics, the bad mass, the bad habits, the bad emotions, the bad actions, these get eliminated. And as soon as these things become eliminated, get eliminated, get removed, the nakhlaq razila is taken away. Eliminated and replaced by akhlaq hamid, a good akhlaq. In other words, you have takabur pride, you replace that with better habits. If you have riya, you'll have ikhlas. If you have anger, you will learn to persevere and have patience. All these things a person controls. If you are immodest, then, immod- then modesty will replace it. Instead of seeking revenge, taking revenge on people, you'll learn to forgive. You'll learn to forgive. If you're selfish, then you will develop the feeling of benefiting others how to uh, and improve yourself, self-sacrifice. If you have love of the world, you'll learn to become content and satisfied. You won't usurp the property and wealth of other people. You won't consume the wealth of other people. You won't make their wealth your wealth. So what Allah Ta'ala will have given to you, you'll be set to buy. Allah has given you a thousand, you'll spend that. If you have a hundred thousand, you'll spend within that. Whatever Allah has given, Allah always gives pure things, and you'll spend within that. You'll be content, satisfied with what you have. So this is called akhlaqi hamida, good habits and characteristics due to purification. Tazkiyam. When akhlaqi hamida comes, at that time immediately Allah Ta'ala announces that this is my wali from today, my friend, he's my wali. My Hazrat Nur al rahmatullah used to say that when akhlaq hamida comes, what is walayat? Friendship of This is the meaning of walayat, that akhlaq razila is eliminated and akhlaq hamida comes into the person. Good akhlaq, excellent conduct, excellent mannerism, excellent characteristics. And a person, that he, subhanAllah, he becomes humble in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for the sake of Allah, he benefits other people, wants to assist other people, even if he himself is in pain. Look at the Holy Prophet.